Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's ODI Friday's Lunchtime Lecture. Today's talk is titled Open Data in China, a 10-year review. And the talk is presented by Dr. Feng Gao, who is the co-founder and managing director of Open Data China. Open Data China are one of six organizations that are currently participating in the ODI and Microsoft's peer learning network for data collaborations. And this is one of the many collaborations between the ODI and Microsoft, which is aiming to bridge the data divide. In this talk today, Feng is going to shed some light on open data developments in China, and he's going to be focusing on key milestones where open data was studied, adopted, and redefined in China. This talk is uh, pre-recorded, as there have been some connectivity issues keeping Feng from presenting live, but we do hope that he's going to be able to join us after the session for a Q&A um, for any questions that come up. If he's unable to join us, we have sent him some questions in advance based on the talk, so we'll air those and if there's any discussion points and from the audience wants to raise we'll also have time for that so just before i head over to the um, presentation some housekeeping issues uh, we will be recording the session uh, please can you keep your cameras off and microphones muted for the duration of the presentation and as always if you have any questions please leave them in the chat or save them until the end um, and we'll have time to air them if Feng is able to join so i'm just gonna Put on the presentation and bear with me, please. Thanks, ODI, for this wonderful opportunity to talk about open data in China. I personally am a long term audience to this uh, lunchtime talk series and so excited and honored to be a speaker today. Before we start the story of open data in China, I would like to first briefly introduce who we are as Open Data China. Uh, in 2012, we first started as a Open Data Foundation's local group. Then we expanded and incorporated ourselves into Open Data China in 2014. Uh, by the beginning, we really work on the open data policy thoroughly, but now we expand our focus to much wider on open digital governance, digital rights, and uh, open economy. We are one of the key stakeholders in China uh, open data ecosystem, and not only delivering uh, research opinions and uh, consultations to uh, governments, but also we uh, actively uh, participate in the front line implementation uh, of open data initiatives, uh, assisting the governments, but also building up uh, communities for the wider uh, hackers, journalists, and uh, the publics. So this talk will be based upon our own experience, uh, observations, and reflection uh, about our work and our uh, observation in the past 10 years. So my talk, as uh, briefly introduced uh, on the website, uh, will uh, be divided into three parts. Uh, the very first part I would like to cover uh, some quick facts about the China's open data ecosystem or how it works in China. So the very first one uh, fact is of course that open data exists in China. Uh, technically the requirement of publishing data in a machine readable way is something really well adopted in China because uh, China favors this kind of machine readability to uh, push forward the agenda of open uh, data economy. However, uh, open license, uh, which uh, face much harder uh, problem in lending on the ground, part of the reason is for uh, almost decades or two decades that in China uh, this kind of license is something poorly understood and most of people don't really know what license is and why we need it with uh, software or with uh, the code or with the uh, data. So it is takes time to educate people to understand what open license is. 
uh, however, the situation might be changed or improved as we are pushing forward the data economy in China. So the government and the market itself uh, needs this kind of a legal tool to uh, ensure everybody play the same game and the same rule. The second factor is unlike many uh, Western countries where uh, probably in UK or in US, uh, usually the government open data, uh, open government data, uh, starts from central, and this takes time and efforts goes to the local and make a local impact. In China, it happens a uh, completely opposite way. Uh, Shanghai and Beijing are the two cities versus adopt the open data idea and then grow into um, nearly 150 local portals now uh, in the past decade. However, we still don't have a national portal, which is interesting uh, as it was early reported that by 2018 we should have one, but it's still not. Uh, we heard that it's already developed. Uh, and might be uh, launched this year. And if you look at the uh, geographic uh, distribution of those local portals, you will notice that most of them sit on the east coast, uh, or let's say they are uh, well developed regions. So they can consider open data, they can consider using data to uh, power up the smart city, uh, power up the data economy. So the very uh, last uh, but the most important fact is open data in China. It follows economic logic rather than a political open governance logic. So uh, in 2015, China considers open data as one of the key methods to grow up the domestic big data industry. Then in last year, the country regards data resources as one of the factor of production in addition to the land, the labor, the capital, and the entrepreneurship. So there is a very strong economically driven agenda to push forward open data to satisfy the market's needs. So the next I would like to uh, work you through a case study of Shanghai, a very simple one, uh, that could help to illustrate how open data as an idea got studied and adopted in this country, and then how we localize it and uh, somehow have to uh, redefine it so it can fit into the local context to survive. So that will work you through four stages, and the first one is the study stage. Uh, so some of you may know Shanghai as one of the most developed cities in China. It also the one pioneered the adoption of freedom of information in 24, uh, so ahead of the nation government when. Uh, 2008, we have the National Freedom of Law, but four years earlier, Shanghai has its own local act. And given such foundation, Shanghai higher leadership at that time, in 2010, they commissioned a study on the feasibility of open government data, and then they got a very strong positive feedback saying, yes, we should do that. So. The open data at the time was considered as an uh, extension of the freedom of information. So the existing two institutions got involved. One is the Shanghai Commission of the Economy and Informalization, and another is the General Office of the Shanghai Government. So they both together to lead the uh, open data initiative at the local. So in the middle of the uh, 2012, we seen uh, the launch of the open data portal at the local, and nine different local departments, uh, ranging from police to the state to transportation, they got involved in publishing their data on a website, then uh, moved to the uh, central portal. Uh, over 200 data sets got released, but most of them about uh, pure facts. 
uh, or uh, some kind of place of interest, uh, for instance, uh, location of the schools, location of the hospitals, uh, they are reference data, they are basic data. Uh, however, one of the key problems at the time is yes, the whole work is doing open data uh, stay quite low key. So it's little known to the wider public. Not a lot of people really know that the Shanghai government is doing that. One of the key events I would like to highlight here uh, by 2014 is one of the forum we uh, did uh, with the World Bank and Fudan University. Uh, the reason I point up here is because these are one of the events that breached uh, both the supply side and the demand side. And it also probably one of the earliest events uh, where the international experts like Emperor Baldwin from the World Bank at that time and Joe Green uh, from NYU at that time, they learned about the state open data status in China. And it is a very uh, important event at that time that enabled uh, the formation of the uh, local ecosystem because most of the uh, non-profits journalists uh, university academics and the city government uh, offices, they know each other at that event. So they can connect together and uh, then collaborate. And uh, one of the um, key issues uh, by 2015, uh, when uh, the Shanghai government already published over 500 data set on the portals, um, is that uh, the people who own data uh, and plan for what to release next has no clue and no motivation in publishing data. And they have no belief in publishing data and uh, letting the outside uh, wider public to solve any problems. And one of the comments we heard at that time from the transportation department is that they believe the data they own are so professional, so no lay people or uh, someone outside of the, the department can understand the data and use the data. And we soon proved them wrong because of the uh, soda competition uh, as a result of the government and community uh, collaboration. Uh, so the by its name, you can tell it's very interesting that we use the metaphor of saying you open up the, uh, the bottle of uh, uh, a soda and you will hear the sound of boom. That's the energy comes out of it. So it, it's just a secret to the data, right? You need to open it up so you can uh, get the result, get the value. And uh, uh, somehow because we can't really get data owners to publish uh, high value data on the portal directly. We try to use the competition as an excuse, as a safe ground uh, to convince those data owners to uh, provide some of the historical sample data, non sensitive, to the competition. Uh, then we only allow the first hundred teams who win the idea. Uh, based upon the sample data to the access, to access those competition through data, and then make uh, use of the data to uh, generate new analysis or outputs uh, the product. Then we use those outputs as evidence. Goes back to convince the data owners that you can publish it later in open format, so more people can benefit from that, but also you can benefit from that. And uh, uh, in a four year period that we worked with over uh, 30 different data owners ranging from local department to private companies, uh, unlocked over 60 different data sets and 15% uh, uh, of them finally becomes open data after the competition. And uh, it is very excited that we also see this competition uh, help uh, entrepreneurship as we uh, had at least four or five different startups as uh, uh, result from the competition. They still uh, grow fast now. Uh, even one of them now already uh, had uh, 100 people in their team. And we also copy or say uh, replicate uh, this kind of 
competition model to other cities like you know, Chongqing, in Shenyang, and uh, there are many, many other uh, cities uh, trying to copy this model. Uh, and we also feel really grateful uh, during the stage of uh, SODA that we get a uh, really strong uh, 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 support from the uh, UK DIT, but also uh, ODI at that time uh, send uh, uh, some experts to China to to um, advise how we can uh, better run the Open Data Government Initiative uh, and so that. Uh, then in 2019, um, we finally reached uh, a bottleneck that we are. The city government already published uh, uh, over, I think, uh, nearly 2,000 data sets. Some of them are uh, downloadable, some of them are in OEPI format. Um, but it is becomes much, much, much more harder to publish high value data. Part of the reason is that under the logic of uh, economic agenda, that you invest into a publication of the data, then you expect a, a huge return, especially money return, uh, tangible benefits from that. And it unlikes open government uh, logic, where uh, publishing open data is one of the responsibility of the government and to satisfy the requirements of transparency. So you don't really argue for money return, you argue for uh, a better reputation of a government. Uh, while in China, we the, the government favors the economic agenda, uh, much way much more stronger than the government agenda, open government agenda. Then under that kind of economic logic, you find a uh, um, balance uh, needs of uh, supplying data and uh, and uh, getting the return from the. The, the, the publication of the data. So we finally reach that point that the government itself feel really hard to continue improving the open data program at local. So in 2019, we surprisingly uh, find out that the Shanghai uh, government, when they try to release a new open data actor, uh, it, in that uh, draft, uh, they actually redefine or refrain what open data they means at local. Uh, they actually divide it into two pieces. Uh, the first piece is unconditional open data, which is completely the real open data. Uh, and the second part, which is so called conditional open data, is that including uh, data that requires uh, a lot of efforts in anonymizing that, or uh, you need to provide the data in real-time manner, uh, in API format. So basically that means you need to invest a lot of money in the technical infrastructure in order to provide the data, and this kind of data will be classified as conditional data. And uh, what that means to users? That means as a user, you need to apply for the data, you need to submit uh, application form to the data owners to request the data, and you need to tell them uh, what kind of usage you are, uh, you are describing, why you wanted the data, what do you, what's it for, and uh, the data owner will assess whether this is one of the uh, data use they would grant and approve your you, uh, your rights to access, and they may need to assess also uh, whether they can really earn benefits from your usage. So um, at that time, as an ad openly active advocate, uh, we feel really disappointed and sad because. It's kind of saying that open data uh, is dead in China. Uh, but after some of the discussion with the international community, we also found uh, or under, understood that probably we, we put too much focus on uh, publishing data as in an open manner as uh, undergo, as output. That might be an end, but 
applying openness as an overall principle into data governance might be the real focus we should uh, we should push, and that idea can survive. What does that means? Because we are in the digital age that China pushes the big data, pushes the AI. We are looking at not only uh, the transparent data flow or access, but we are also looking at how much data got collected in the first place. Whether this is has asset enough and uh, about the use about the data standard there's so much more things we should really look at and push forward the principle of open and the interesting is even under the logic of uh, data economic uh, economic agenda uh, to create a fair market or create a uh, um, market environment where people can really benefit from uh, the ground market rule and uh, to have a healthy uh, data economy that means that we need a transparent uh, data uh, standard we need to have participatory data community we need to have fair data access all those things means that we need to win trust and create a trustworthy environment for the data governance, for the data economy. So in this sense, we believe openness must still have its place in China in its uh, digital economic agenda. We may see a stop of releasing more high value data as purely open data, but we may see that more data can be released or uh, got um, accessed and used and managed or let's say stewed in, um, in a way that follows open principle. So that's our hope and uh, that's work we will continue to working on. And that's all the things I would like to uh, share and uh, I'm happy to take any question from you and you are welcome to visit our website uh, or email us at the contact at opendatachina.org or follow us on the newly created Twitter account. Thanks. Great. Thanks for that, Feng. Uh, that was a fascinating talk. Um, Feng has just joined us. So, um, hi, Feng. Thanks. Thanks for joining hello, us. Hello, thanks. Hello. Hello, guys. Yeah. Great. So if we have any questions from the audience, please feel free uh, to ask them or put them in the chat. Uh, but in the meantime, while we wait to see if there are any, um, we had a chance to, to ask Feng some questions from the team in advance. So um, Feng, if you don't mind, I'm just going to pick a, a few of those just to, just to ask your, your thoughts on what the team sure. asked. Uh, the first one is about open licenses in China. Uh, you said yep. that in between 2012 and 2014, open data was published under websites in terms of use. Uh, what's the situation like today? Uh, did the discourse around licensing evolve? And what are the sort of latest developments you can share on, on that front? Yes, uh, I would say as the situation gets kind of better uh, as uh, most of the cities start looking at whether they should uh, adopt this kind of open license because of the um, annual uh, assessment of the uh, open data performance at local conducted by academic and uh, independent research researchers in China, uh, kind of based upon the uh, open data barometer approach. Um, another thing I would like to uh, mention is that uh, just uh, in this year that uh, way as a uh, open data China, we also worked with uh, Shanghai Jiaoting University, we start uh, uh, developing a new uh, open data license uh, standard for for Chinese government and for for industry. So um, the hope is uh, yes, definitely would like to have more governments and uh, uh, even private sector to adopt this kind of open license and to publish publish uh, as much as possible open data. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Uh, I see there's no questions in the chat. Um, if someone from the audience has a question, please just feel free to take yourself off mute and ask. But in the meantime, I'll, think I'll ask you another question that we have from the team. Um, the question says that it's interesting that the rise of 
open government data is linked to Freedom of Information Act in Shanghai. Uh, in your talk, you said that Shanghai issued an open government data feasibility study. Uh, could you just expand on this? Uh, what were the key findings? And did the findings impact the decisions about open data across China? Yeah, um, as I mentioned is that uh, China, uh, uh, especially Shanghai, uh, started developing its own freedom information uh, practice and experiment uh, back to 2004. So when uh, the higher leadership tried to uh, commission a study uh, on the open data in 2010, the, the research team didn't really publish uh, a report uh, at the end, but uh, what we know is uh, first they really send a very positive uh, signal back to the higher uh, leadership uh, on the feasibility that that China, especially Shanghai, should adopt this idea of open data. And secondly, that uh, they definitely give them uh, a, a advice on approach uh, by uh, taking a pilot only involving a selected uh, a group of departments to publish data first, then to scale it up uh, to the uh, whole city. So I think that's definitely something that influenced how the city uh, took its approach and uh, definitely scale it up uh, finally at the uh, city level, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, it seems we still don't have any questions, which is usually a, a sign of a very thorough and conclusive uh, talk. So I suppose just, just one final question. Uh, to conclude, Feng, uh, considering how you ended your presentation with uh, open data as an output, possibly dead, but as a process still alive, uh, what are your hopes for open data in China in the future? And, and how do you suspect this will sort of develop um, as time goes by? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, in this year, China is going to uh, pass to new legislation on uh, personal information protection and on data security. Um, and we are seeing a much increasingly uh, discussion on how to regulate uh, data exchange, uh, data flow, and all those points to a new direction on making this kind of data exchange to data, uh, the whole data governance more transparent. So we, we believe sometimes that in the future that uh, no matter whether we will see a much more open data, pure open data in China, but we will definitely see much more open approach got adopted in managing and distributing the data in China. Okay, great, thanks. Thanks, Frank, that's, that's very interesting. Um, yeah, it seems we don't have any questions today. So, so thanks everyone for joining. Um, oh, wait, someone's just come in. Um, this is from Joss Sessions. Uh, I understand China has a 250 year plan that is continually updated. As we look to the past for reference and the future for what could be, how can the West and East collaborate for the better? Oh yeah, that's uh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I would say that uh, definitely needs more uh, communication and a dialogue between the West and the, and, and the East, especially in, uh, for China. I would say that uh, uh, for China, that uh, most of the time that uh, uh, China try to learn from uh, Western countries. As I mentioned, that uh, in the past few. Uh, years that uh, uh, UK experts, US experts, all visit China to uh, provide advice on how China can uh, localize the open data approach uh, locally. Uh, but reversely, that we're also seeing that China start uh, exporting uh, its own practice on data, uh, data stewardship or data governance. So uh, definitely there are more chance if, if the both party can really uh, talk to each other and, uh, and try to experiment each other's approach at the local. That will be very interesting to see how it turns out as a result of innovation, as a result of collaboration between the two parties. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Frank. Um, I suppose we'll just give it a moment if anyone has any, any follow-up questions. Please feel free to ask. Yeah. Just says, great, thank you. Thank you. Thank, do you have any, any closing comments you'd, you'd like to make for, for everyone here? Well, um, I definitely would, uh, would encourage more uh, people, uh, especially from Western countries, uh, to, uh, to look at how, how China is doing uh, open data and adopting 
uh, the open principle at a, uh, at a local level. And uh, what definitely will come uh, more people coming to China to really provide your advice and uh, really experience and advice uh, on how China can better really apply this kind of open principle into a data or much generally, let's say, digital governance. Uh, that's much important in the next, uh, let's say, 20, 30 years, especially when we talk about uh, Western China collaboration. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Fan. Is there a question from anyone else? No, I think that's it. Great. Uh, yeah, thanks again, everyone, for joining. And thanks, Feng. I understand it's, it's quite late on a Friday night for you in Shanghai. So thanks so much for <laughs> offering your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.